Growing your own corn can be a truly enriching and gratifying experience. You're going to plant one small seed and that's going to grow into a big old tall vigorous plant that just bursts with life. This is a vegetable that can fill your dinner plate and your imagination. Welcome back to New Garden Road. This is where I share my love of gardening with you in a way that I hope will inform, inspire, and elevate you. Here's what you need to know about growing sweet corn. Corn is a warm season crop that should only be planted once soil temperatures are between 50 and 60 degrees. There are two planting windows for corn in Central Texas. Beginning in March through about the middle of April, and then again late July through about the middle of August. We are growing the Golden Bantam Improved and this was seeded on March 25th. It's really important that you make sure the soil temperatures are appropriate for seeding your corn. Otherwise, it's gonna be a lost cause and you're not gonna have the productivity or the yield that you want. Prepare the soil by working in up to two inches of compost and an organic fertilizer that's high in nitrogen. The one I use is rated 824. Plant two to three seeds every 10 to 12 inches. After they've sprouted and grown for about two weeks, Make sure you thin those to one plant. And it can be kind of tricky when you're planting your seeds, but you gotta try to visualize what the finished product's gonna look like. I like to form furrows in my raised garden bed prior to planting my corn seeds. This makes the technique of dirting up the corn plants easier. When you dirt up corn plants, you help to prevent what's called lodging. That's when plants fall over in windy conditions. Make your furrows a few inches deep and a few inches wide. I've made mine perpendicular to the long side of my bed every 12 inches. And then I've planted two seeds every 10 inches, which will give me five plants per furrow after thinning. Once the corn is 12 inches tall, plants may be dirted up. Use your hands to fill the furrows with the soil that was pushed aside when the furrows were formed. Firm the soil in place on both sides of the corn plants. Although dirting up your corn plants will increase their stability, it may still be necessary to stake a few plants. Just don't forget to thin them out, that's super important. Make sure you thin out your seedlings can't stress that enough. You get crowded plants in there fighting over nutrients, fighting over water, and they're either going to be stunted or stressed and that can cause different insect and disease issues. Secondary shoots and sucker roots are common in sweet corn and if you leave them be that's okay. The leaves that are growing off of these secondary shoots are conducting photosynthesis which is going back into the plant and some of those little sucker roots that go down they're also helping to uptake nutrients for the plant. Assure there's adequate soil moisture throughout the growing season and through the time of harvest. Make sure you feed the plants regularly and keep the bed free of weeds. I've got drip irrigation lines running through this raised bed. Currently, I am running this twice a week for two hours and that's just slowly dripping into the soil. Gravity's working and the moisture's being drawn deeper into the soil than it would be if I was just going by and doing a quick blast or several passes with a hose. I have been feeding these bad boys weekly. I love the fish emulsion and the liquid seaweed and molasses. I'll take all of those and put them in a pump up sprayer with some rainwater and I'll apply that to the foliage and to the soil. Feeding the soil is feeding the plants. Soil is the stomach of the plant. Know when to harvest. You can expect one to two ears of corn per plant and about 18 to 24 days after the silks emerge, they'll turn dark and brown. This will indicate that the ear of corn is mature. So you can see this silk here is starting to dry out, starting to get a little bit darker. It's gonna flatten out and get drier and even more dark. If you wanna get an idea of whether or not the corn is actually mature, you can pull back part of the husk, take your fingernail and press on one of the corn kernels. It should burst open with a little bit of milky liquid. This will let you know that they're ready for harvest. It's important to plant your corn in blocks, not in rows, as they're primarily wind pollinated. And the pollen from the tassel needs to find the silk. Each one of those silk strands represents a potential corn kernel. It's always important to plant the taller plants that you're growing on the north side of your garden so you're going to have to choose a location that coincides with both the north side of your garden so that you can see, I mean at 9 feet tall this could shade out some plants pretty significantly as well as being able to plant it in a block such as 
this raised garden bed. Here's a word about safety. I recommend wearing long sleeves, gardening gloves, and protective eyewear. Corn is like a big old grass stalk. It can cause cuts and minor abrasions. Protect yourself so you can keep on gardening. The corn earworm is a very common pest. If you choose, you may add a few drops of mineral oil to the silks after they emerge every three to four days. If you don't, your corn may experience a variable amount of damage with most taking place at the top of the ear where it may be easily cut off. Personally, growing 40 corn plants gives me enough food that I can share a little with nature. I don't mind. So that corn earworm, it's, it's something you can virtually expect to occur in the garden. They're very common. I would focus on the timing of the harvest. You know, if you leave the corn on longer than it needs to be, first of all, it is going to degrade its, its condition, its texture. Those kernels are going to get hard. And also, it's going to give more time for the insect to eat on things. There's also some pollination issues that can occur. So you might not have full kernels and it might look like something got in there, but that could just be due to pollination. I got about one caterpillar per ear of corn. It was just at the top. I didn't have any issues cutting that off and I still had plenty of corn. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got some tips and I hope you're gonna grow your own corn. Leave me some questions or comments below. And if you like what you see and you want to see more of it, please subscribe to my page. Don't forget to watch all them videos.